we talked about um, three groups so far. We talked about periphera, the sponges. We talked about nadarians, the um, jellyfish and sea anemones, things like that. We talked about echinoderms, spiny skin, the sea urchins, the starfish, the sand dollars. So we got a few more groups to talk about today. Now this next group, worms, is um, it's actually three separate groups I'm combining into one here. Really, there's three groups of worms. Flat worms, round worms, and segmented worms. But we don't need to distinguish about them for our purposes. But these worms, obviously you're familiar with what type of worm probably. An earthworm. You see them all over. Earthworms are really important for the soil ecosystem. As they burrow through the soil, they help get oxygen into the soil. They digest little bits of organic matter. And then their waste helps put that uh, nutrients back into the soil for plants to use. Um, you know, you may have seen their waste. They're called earthworm castings. And you may not have known what it is. If you ever look like on a patch of like mud or something, if there's holes around next to it, a little pile of stuff, and maybe you put it in your finger, smash it, or you throw it at your brother or something, that's actually earthworm um, waste. I'll show you a picture of it in a minute, but you may just not have realized what that was. It's actually really good for the soil. But there's lots of other things other than earthworm, okay? Um, and so obviously the earthworm is the one we're most familiar with. But here's another one related to the earthworm. What is that? Is that a leech? Yeah, that's a leech. Yeah. So we're going to learn a little bit more about leeches this week. Um, but this is a leech. Leeches are also segmented worms, like an earthworm. And leeches live in the water. They uh, are parasites. They will temporarily attach to an animal. and this part here is actually not where they feed. That holds them on. The big um, sucker, it's like a suction cup, holds them on to the animal they're going to prey on. And then this narrow end is actually where they will then bite their prey. Okay? Their saliva has special chemicals that stops the blood from clotting. has special chemicals that are like um, a pain killer that numbs the area so the animal doesn't know it's been bitten. They then consume the blood of that animal until they're filled up, and then they'll detach, sort of float down to the bottom of the water and just digest that blood. So there are parasites, they live in fresh water, you can find them around here. i never seen the movie Stand By Me. It's an old movie. Um, anyway, there's a scene in that has to do with leeches. Have you ever seen like um, outdoors or something, the great outdoors? Oh no. Where it's like they're in a boat overnight and then leeches just oh, yeah. go all over. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're they're fairly common. They're not really dangerous, so they're not gonna I mean they could bite you. you but they don't species. prey generally on humans. Generally they're they prey on animals, other animals. Um this is a, a worm we're gonna look at this week. It's probably in the mail now on its way here. This is a flatworm, it's a, called a planaria. Planaria pretty neat because they have this ability to regenerate. If you cut this planaria in half, each half will grow into a whole new worm. <laughs> so um, they have this ability to regenerate. Now this is another flat worm. So this is not the worm. This white stuff is the worm. What this is, it's a heart of a dog. Is it ringworm? Nope, this is heartworm. So if you have a pet, if you have a dog at home, every once a month maybe, you might give them one of those heart guard medicines, tablets, it looks like a treat. Those are actually uh, an anti-parasitic medication. It's to prevent your dog from getting infected with this parasitic worm. This worm, if it gets into your dog and your dog gets infected with it, it the worm makes its way into the circulatory system, eventually makes its way into the heart, and it grows and reproduces, and it becomes so large, it eventually will clog up the heart of the dog, and the dog can't survive, and the dog dies. So those tablets you give to your dog every month or whatever is to prevent them from getting this heartworm infection. Um, parasite, we're, there's lots of flatworms are parasites. One, my dog one time, 
when we first got our dog, this was like 18 years ago, but I was taking her in the backyard to go to the bathroom, and as she went to the bathroom, I looked down at the little gift that she left, and on top of that, I noticed a tiny little white thing, like about the size of a grain of rice, and it was moving around. And so um, I knew that it was a worm, and so brought a sample to the vet, and they gave her medicine, and it just kills a worm. It's not, not deadly or anything. But the other thing is, um, well, we'll talk about it when we talk about parasites. So yeah, that, there's lots of different, there are some parasitic worms of humans. Some can live in foods that we eat. It's one of the reasons we make sure we cook foods to the proper temperature. Um, there's lots of parasites that could affect So if my dog doesn't take stuff from our worm, and then like we started giving it to him, would he be safe even if he like were to have it right now? Yeah, yeah, well, they, they have medicines that could kill it even if they did have an infection, yeah. Great? So and they can test for it. If you bring your dog to the vet, they can test and see. I don't know if you know kind of access question, but like my dog, while my mom is a vegetarian, and like she gave one of the things to my dog, and she had like this total like allergic reaction. Your dog did? Yeah, it's like a Yeah, it could be allergic reactions to them. Yeah, it's a different medicines and stuff. This is another parasitic infection. This is one that does affect humans. This is a person's leg. This is their foot. And you can see it's all swollen. This is because there is a certain type of worm that gets into a person's lymphatic system, the system that redistributes fluid throughout our body. And this worm can get in there and clog it up. And so, like, um, the fluid from a person's lower extremities can't get back into circulation and it just starts to collect and it builds up in their feet and in their legs uh, and it causes them to swell up really big like that. It's called elephantitis. I thought that was Can you die from that? Um, I, yeah, you could eventually, but this is like not even the most extreme cases. Like when we get to human body systems, I have some pictures where a person's whole leg swells up five or six times its normal size. This is um, uh, another flatworm, but this is a free living, not a parasitic one. It's called a fluke. They live in the oceans. They're really colorful. They swim by sort of waving the, the margins of their body around. It's really neat looking things. So those are worms, a group of invertebrates. Next group is mollusks. This is one you're familiar with, with, even if you maybe don't realize it, because mollusks oftentimes are things people eat. What might be an invertebrate you might eat? What? Snails? Uh, shrimp are invertebrates, they're in another group. Clams? A frog? Yeah, we're going to talk about yeah, kind of frogs. We'll talk about that when we get to vertebrates. So yeah, these are, mollusks are um, invertebrates that generally have, they have soft bodies, but often they're inside of a shell. Not always, but often. And they have, their body is called the mantle, and it's sort of this muscular um, tissue. Uh, and they move around, okay, using that mantle, or it's sometimes called the foot in, a, um, in clams and other bivalves. Um, most have shells, but like this, this is a slug, a slug, it doesn't have a shell. You know, you can, there's slugs around here, go out in the spring and summer, in the morning, when it's wet out, you might find them on plants in your in your lawn. Um, you know, you step on them; they're like squishy and kind of mm -hmm. gross. So that's a they they can be very large. So usually in our area, they, they're pretty small. But like a banana slug can be you know eight or ten or twelve inches large. Great. Um, I have a question. Where do they go? Like when they're in the daytime or something. Like yeah, they just like burrow into the ground or or hide under rocks or under leaves. Because they could dry out pretty easily because they don't they're not water. Like Lar there's often larger ones in tropical areas, yeah, but they're they're um, because they can live all year long, they have food all year long. Uh, an octopus is another example. That's a mollusk. It's a very complex mollusk. I'll show you a video maybe later today. Um, octopus have this unbelievable and other squid and other things of other mollusks to camouflage themselves. 
They can change the color, the pattern, the texture of their skin. They're really pretty interesting. Um, they have a pretty well-developed nervous system as well. Clams, mussels, oysters, they're all mollusks. Um, they're called bivalves, meaning two shells. And you know, you may not, I'm sure you've seen clams or people eating clams or you've eaten clams. Um, that inside the part that you eat in a clam, if you have like a steamed clam, you know, that's all of their body system. That's their digestive system and excretory system. And that's basically all of it. And their shell opens up and they can slide their mantle, this, their foot out sometimes and move around on the ground. Some open and close their shell and use like jet propulsion to move through the water. They're mostly filter feeders where they take in water through this part called the siphon, take a little bit of the food out, and then send the rest of the water um, along. Um, but they're common, they go very, very large to really, really small. There's a wide variety of bivalves, there's a clam. A snail, basically a slug with a shell. A snail is another type of mollusk. This is a nautilus. A nautilus is um, a sea uh, mollusk, has this like spiral shell, and it can go sort of go into it. Now they make these shells. The shell is a part of their body. Because sometimes people get confused, like what is something that just uses a shell from something else? Anybody know? You may have one. Some oh. people keep them home. Hermit crab. A hermit crab. They don't make those shells, right? You put some shells in there, and they just climb into them. They could come out of them. Um, these actually, the shell is a part. They've made the shell. Oh, like ancient? Yeah, they've existed for a long time. Yeah, you're right. That's a conch. People eat, people eat a lot of these mollusks. People eat snails and conch and oysters, yeah. clams, mussels, things like that. Garrett? Okay. Um, elk, uh, squid. There's not a picture of a squid up here, but a squid is also a mollusk. You know? Calamari, yeah. All right. Our last group to talk about are something called arthropods. This is a really huge group. And the name itself, do you remember what this root pod means? Like a podiatrist or pseudopod? It means feet, yeah, foot. Um, arthropod, it means jointed feet. Because arthropods, they have this outer skeleton called an exoskeleton, kind of like a shell around the outside of their body. And it's sort of like protection. It's like a suit of armor, like Iron Man's uh, suit. And in that sort of armor or that shell, there are sort of like breaks at each joint so that they can actually bend. If you get a suit of armor, right, the arms aren't just like tubes of metal. You don't walk around like this, right? At each joint that you have to bend, there's like a gap and then there's a, a way to bend. And the same is true in these arthropods. There's little gaps and that's where that name comes from. They have bilateral symmetry. Right? If you drew a line down an ant, you end up with two equal halves. And they have this exoskeleton. That's uh, an important characteristic. What do you think the purpose is of this exoskeleton, this shell around them? Claudia? Yeah, it's good protection against predators. Helps protect them, gives their body structure and support. But it also has a, um, a downside. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, when I ask you to think of an animal, you'll probably think of some kind of mammal. But actually, 75% of all animals are arthropods. So they're a huge percentage. There's many, many types of arthropods. In fact, let's, we're going to list. So again, we're, what domain are we in? Mm -hmm. Nope. Domain. Three domains. Nope, that's not a domain. That's a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Above kingdom. There's three domains. Eukarya. So domain eukarya. What kingdom are we in? No. Domain eukarya. Kingdom? Animal. Phylum? Arthropod. What's the next level down? Kingdom, phylum? Class. So class 
there's a few classes, and these are things you're familiar with. Types of arthropods. Okay? That's one class. What is that? Crab. That's a crab. That is a, the class that are called crustaceans. That's a class of arthropods. They have ten legs. Insects is another class of arthropods. How many legs does an insect have? Eight. Six. What has eight? Spiders, Spiders which are called arachnids. So insects are things with six legs. Butterflies, flies, grasshoppers, bees. Um, those are all beetles, <coughs> insects. Arachnids are things like spiders, scorpions, ticks. Crustaceans are lots of things that we eat. I don't eat, but you might eat. Crabs, lobsters, shrimp, they're all crustaceans. Then there's two more groups. There's centipedes and millipedes. They're all arthropods. Is that? Do you know um, the lobster, um, the crab has a string to climb up to your face? Yeah, no. I'm going to show you a video on a crab in a minute. So these are all arthropods, huge group of animals. Um, let's watch this in a minute. Let's skip it for right now. I'm going to talk two more slides. Metamorphosis. So, oh, actually, two more slides. Um, yeah, we'll watch it eventually. So, insects and other arthropods, they have this exoskeleton, which is helpful for protection. But the problem is, once it forms around the arthropod, it can't grow anymore. And so in order for the arthropod that it is to get larger, it has to basically shed that exoskeleton and grow a larger new exoskeleton. But during that time when it's shed, what's the problem? They're vulnerable. They don't have that protective layer, so they're more vulnerable to pests. And we have this term called metamorphosis. This is when an organism sort of goes through a change in its body structure. And there's two types of metamorphosis we'll talk about. Incomplete and complete. Hello? It's OK? Yep. OK. All right, thank you. Yep. <coughs> So incomplete metamorphosis is when the egg hatches into the young, and then it basically goes through several stages that are called the nymph stages, when basically just is getting larger each time. Okay. It's not changing its overall form. So here you have like a grasshopper that hatches out an egg into a tiny little grasshopper, and then it sheds its exoskeleton, grows larger, it forms a new exoskeleton. And that happens several times, several nymph stages, until it gets to its full adult size. Okay? And then the adult can reproduce, laying more eggs. That, there's a name, does anyone know the name of that process of shedding an exoskeleton? Molting, it's called molting. And in a minute or two, I'll show you a really neat video of a crab molting. So this is called incomplete metamorphosis. The other kind of metamorphosis you're probably more familiar with is complete metamorphosis. We'll see if we we'll watch. Um, complete metamorphosis is when the form of the animal actually changes. It goes through stages when it almost looks like a completely different animal. When you guys were in elementary school, did you ever raise caterpillars? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're familiar with this. Caterpillar is the larval stage of what? A butterfly. A larva means the young. So in caterpillars, the egg hatches into this larva. What's the main job of a larva? It has like one focus in its life. Eat. Eat as much as possible build up energy, grow larger, store energy, and then it's ready eventually to go into the next stage, the pupa stage. Okay. 
forms the pupa stage. And then inside of that pupa, it's going through a change. It's growing new parts. It's changing into the adult form, which in the butterfly is the butterfly. What's the main purpose of the adult stage? Not as much eat, but reproduce. Play it to the next generation. Okay. And there's lots of more to go through this. Um, mosquitoes, uh, moths, go through metamorphosis, flies. What is the larval stage of a fly called? A maggot. Yeah, a maggot is this stage of a fly, is the adult version. So here in this little time-lapse video it shows metamorphosis. You have the caterpillar, now it's, it's you know, stored up enough energy, it's attached to some branch, created this um, pupa stage, and inside of that, it's changing into the adult form of the butterfly. Eventually it emerges, and it's ready to move on with the next stage of it. All right, this is our last slide for today. We're going to be looking at insects eventually, and we're going to need to know about the different parts of an insect, their anatomy. So insects have three body sections, we call them. They're labeled here one, two, and three. Now the first body section, you can probably guess what it's called. This is where the sense organs are, the mouth. Then there's a middle section where you have the digestive organs. The wings are attached, the legs are attached. That middle section is called the thorax. And then you have the back section where you have the reproductive organs. That's called the abdomen. So if we start up here in the head section, what do we call these things that are labeled for, right? Yeah, they're antennae. They're sense organs for the grasshopper, for the insect to sense its environment. How about number five? Yeah, and does anyone know anything about the eye of an insect? Yeah, it is, but there's something else because it's different. Jordan? Yeah, it's called a compound eye, and it has all of these small lenses make up that larger eye. <coughs> what about number six? What's that? Yeah. We, we call that the mouth part. And there's a wide variety of types of mouth parts for different insects. Some have mouth parts that are adapted to um, cutting through leaves. Some have mouth parts adapted to chewing or biting or consuming other insects. It just depends on what that arthropod has adapted to. Seven are these tiny little holes in the abdomen. Those holes in the abdomen are called spiracles. Can you guess what they do? Yeah, they're for breathing. The arthropod doesn't breathe through its mouth. It takes air in through these tiny little holes in the abdomen, these spiracles. And that's how it gets oxygen into its body. Number eight at the very end of this grasshopper. This is a female grasshopper. It has an ovipositor. This is a part that will release eggs when this grasshopper is reproducing. After mating, the female can hold sperm inside of the abdomen. And then as she releases eggs, use those sperm cells to fertilize her eggs, and then she lays them and they can hatch in there. Nine, what? 
wings, obviously. Some arthropods have wings, some do not. And then finally, number 10. Yeah, how many do insects have? Six. Six. Insects all have six legs. Are there any questions about any of the arthropods we talked about today? Yeah? Can you watch the crab video? Yeah, we're going to watch uh, the mollusk video first, and then we'll watch the crab video, or maybe we'll reverse it.